Hey everyone, welcome to this week's stock and macro update. Uh, this week I want to start off with going over a couple more of the disruptor stocks in my 21 disruptors index. So last week we went over the 3D printing companies, uh, Desktop Metal and Proto Labs. This week I want to go over a couple more companies that I consider to be manufacturing, uh, even though they're not traditional like uh, building things in a factory type of manufacturing. They are actually companies that make it more efficient and more possible to design all of the innovative things that we're seeing unfold today. So these companies are Cadence Design Systems, the ticker for that one is CDNS, and then the other one is PTC, and the ticker is PTC as well. So again, these are companies that uh, are crucial really for the entire kind of product lifecycle uh, system for creating all these innovative products. So they work on everything from you know making uh, collaborative augmented reality systems where people from across the world can collaborate on projects and actually see basically uh, a hologram type thing and work on that in real time and like the real actual object is there it's it blows my mind the the amount of technology that's out there to even create the technology that we we see today in end use products um, and these companies are doing other things like Cadence Design Systems design the actual AI, machine learning, and memory that goes into uh, certain uh, semiconductors that power data warehouses and things like that. They also are involved with um, creating systems that actually are able to simulate whether or not new uh, medical treatments will be successful. So. I mean, these are really at the heart of all the trends that we're seeing unfold today in terms of innovation. And definitely, I think they deserve a spot in our index. And they, you know, they fly under the radar because they don't actually make the end use products for the most part, but they are still very, very important in the new manufacturing uh, kind of revolution that we're seeing right now. Um, both of them also financially very, very strong. They have very good cash flows, cadence demands or cadence design systems has I think over twice as much cash as they do debt. Um, and you know, again, both of them have very, very strong cash flows, which is what we wanna see right now. Uh, preferably low debt relatively. PTC has a little bit higher debt than most of the companies in this index, but I think that their strong cash flows make up for that. But low debt, high cash flow, um, high cash balance businesses are the ones that we want to be investing in right now for sure. and. You know, for the most part, these companies meet those criteria, especially in the cash flow department. So just wanted to give a brief overview of those to start. Also want to go over the 21 Disruptors Index. Uh, over the past week, it had a monster week up 10.54%, beating the S&P 500 4.77%, the NASDAQ at 5.27%, and the Russell 2000 at 5.35%. ARKK, another one of the benchmarks we use, actually beat the Disruptors Index over the past week, and that was up 12.54%, 12 12 so beat it by 2% there. Um, the top three performers in our index were DocuSign, up 20.69%, mostly due to a huge bump after they reported their earnings. Uh, Gardon Health, once again, near the top of the list, GH at 17.58% gains. And then Bitcoin was actually number three, starting to see some life finally again in Bitcoin at 17.44% up over the past week. Uh, the bottom performers, all of which were still up, Energy Fuels, UUUU up 3.84%, Cadence Design up 4.24%, and Enphase, ENPH, up 4.68%. And Enphase and Lithium or uh, Levent LTHM actually made new highs during the week. So not too many stocks made new highs, as you'll see in the Substack article. Uh, between Wednesday and Thursday, I think it was something like uh, 71 or 72 stocks or new highs total were made between the the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq, which comprised thousands and thousands of stocks. And so we had two of the ones in there um, out of those 70 couple that made new highs. Um, now I want to go over the, the main piece of this, uh, this week's video, which is what's going on with you know, leading versus coincident versus lagging indicators. And this is a really important thing to look at because it basically boils down a bunch of different uh, pieces of economic data and classifies them into things that you see 
usually before economic strength or weakness, during economic strength or weakness, and following economic strength or weakness. So um, again, the three categories are leading, coincident, and lagging. So a few examples, and this is based on the conference board's actual indexes for these three things, uh, which I find extremely useful. So the, a few leading indicators they have are weekly jobless claims, manufacturers new orders, and building permits for private housing. Uh, a few coincident uh, indicators they have are industrial production, non-farm payrolls, and manufacturing and trade sales. And a few that make up the lagging indicators are uh, CPI monthly change, especially for services, uh, the ratio of consumer credit to personal income, and the value of outstanding commercial and industrial loans. So that, mo that mostly has to do with things that we're really seeing today uh, start to look, you know, like they're turning over a little bit. Um, as I got into in the Substack article, there is a lot of tightening in banking standards to who exactly they want to give out loans to. Now that rates are very high, uh, that means there's higher credit risk, whether you're loaning to a business or a person. Um, the, the credit risk is definitely higher as rates go up because obviously you, ha uh, you have to rely on that counterparty to pay back higher interest in addition to the principal. So uh, for the most part, we're going to see lagging or leading indicators kind of foreshadow recession or economic pain or whatever you want to call it. And then coincident, of course, happens during it. And then lagging usually is actually strong at the beginning of a recession and then tails off and is weak when you start to see the actual recovery. Uh, so that can't really be relied on as a good gauge of where we are in the economy. You definitely want to be looking at the leading indicator here uh, because there's there's starting to uh, um, we're starting to see some pain really and kind of warning flashes in the LEI, the leading economic index. So over the past six months, and this is again conference board data, the leading economic index is down 1.6%, the coincident economic index is up 0.8%, and the lagging economic index is up 3.7%. So again, the, the clear pattern here is that the leading indicators are starting to see declines pretty consistently over the past six months. Uh, the coincident indicators are up a little bit and the lagging ones are up a lot. So, you know, a year ago, six months ago, even we were at a much stronger point in the economy than we are right now. Things have gotten weaker very, very fast. And we're seeing that weakness mostly happen in the leading indicators, which means we should be prepared to see next the coincident ones come down. And then finally, when it's clear, you know, that we are in a recession, if we go into a, even a, a, a moderate to severe one, if the if that's what lies ahead we'll see the lagging ones start to go bad uh probably towards the end of that so it would be a good sign to start buying a lot of um you know stocks and crypto towards the end of that when you really start to see the lagging ones do poorly uh, i would say that the jobs market is the, probably the one saving grace for the economy right now but that is a overall i would say it's a lagging indicator especially the unemployment rate uh, the U.S. has gone into a recession before when the economic or when the unemployment rate was only 3.6 percent. So if you have a lot of people dropping out of the labor force, it can make the unemployment rate look lower than it actually is. That's what's going on right now. Um, and we're starting to see millions and millions of people come back in. I think it's that we're at the start of that right now, which I went into in last week's article. Uh, and that is because the overall uh, the, the labor force participation rate, which is the amount of people that are kind of actively looking for work compared to everybody that could be looking for work is still, I believe, a little over a percent lower than it was at this point um, uh, pre-COVID, which means that there's a few million people out there that either became, you know, working age during that span or they dropped out of the, the labor force uh, because of lockdowns and everything, maybe their business went out of business or they worked for a company that went out of business and they still have not uh, re-entered the labor force. But we, you know, we saw some signs of that last month and I think that that is the beginning of a trend where we're going to see, yeah, again, millions, I think it was like three or four million people come into the labor force that, that were there before and have just been out of it for the past couple of years. They're starting to come back in. 
So the questions are, how many new people can the labor market absorb? Because again, the labor market's very strong. I think there's almost two jobs for every person looking for work. But even if they're, even if I think all 4 million or whatever people come into the job market and are looking for jobs, there would still be more job openings than the amount of people looking for jobs. So I think the, the job market can actually absorb quite a bit right now, which is good news because that, again, is the one thing that's really, really holding up our economy right now. And it also depends on the amount of inflation we see going forward. So uh, recording this Tuesday before the inflation number comes out. So uh, obviously, by the time you see this video, that data will be known and the market probably will have reacted pretty strongly in either direction to that. Uh, but inflation is a big deal right now, especially because uh, whether or not companies are going to be able to afford to pay people increasingly at the rate of inflation is huge. So if if energy prices stay high and inflation stays high, obviously people are going to ask for bigger raises that keep up with inflation. Um, the companies are also paying more energy costs in some sectors more than others, but that's affecting them too. And having higher wages in addition to that obviously would compound that effect and they would probably you know, in some of these older sectors, like especially retail um, and maybe some of the old manufacturing, maybe old transportation and things like that are going to have a, a really hard time doing that. Um, and so I think that could be a cause for trouble down the road. And this is, again, why it's very important to really curate the companies that you're investing in right now, because we're going to see a huge split, I believe, in the market where you know, eventually we're going to see the market move towards the cash heavy companies that are seeing real growth, meaning sales growth above inflation and also no issues with debt, uh, no issues with like with uh, cash shortages or things like that. Um, they've got enough cash to cover their bills. They've got um, plenty of cash coming in through strong cash flows. That's very, very important. And I think it's going to become increasingly important going forward. Still not really seeing too many people talk about that, but um, definitely watch for those headlines because they are going to come in the next year or so. Uh, so the best case really is that energy stays low and companies can afford to pay people more. And the worst case is that energy rebounds and people demand higher pay to keep up with inflation, causing higher expenses for the companies. And then, you know, they're going to have to either lay people off or raise the prices of their goods and services, causing more inflation down the road. So I think usually it's it's going to be somewhere in between the best and worst case scenarios obviously but i i still think that the jobs market is is going to be um at least life support for the economy for the foreseeable future probably up to six months out and then we'll we'll see what's going on at that point with inflation uh but yeah i think uh wage inflation is is something to watch uh just because you know it's um pertaining to the the jobs market which is still very strong so overall again this is why you got to be careful with what you invest in right now i think the the 21 disruptors index is really uh my years of research boiled down into the companies that i think are the strongest and are going to be the strongest as we see innovation play out and as we see it get more and more adopted take more market share and also as the older companies start to uh, basically you know uh, fail and on, on some level and start their decline uh, and maybe that's already started we'll have to see i think it is in some places like uh, the bigger retail stores but you know um, going forward that's going to hurt the indices because those companies have huge market caps and the ones that are going to replace the market share and you know take the workers that, that are working at those companies are gonna and they're going to have to switch the the companies that are healthy are going to absorb all of that and it's going to make them scale even more and be more efficient and uh, even more successful and see higher growth in the future uh, because these companies still have you know relatively low market share especially in the stock market a lot of them are market caps uh, I would say under 20 billion dollars at least the companies in the disruptors index so uh, these still have so much so much uh, farther to go in terms of gains in the stock market. Um, and I think that, you know, again, it's very important to know what you're invested in right now. I'm not sure that indices are the best answer to that. And so I wanted to come up with this disruptors index 
to be an alternative for people to see some some better bets for the future uh, to put their money into. So that is it for this week. I appreciate everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again on Friday for the crypto update.